All right, um, we're going to use Mongoose to create our schema in the, this lecture. Now you might be wondering why are we using Mongoose to create schema or schema for the models. And although we're using document database, which is MongoDB, which is schemaless, I mean, you can attach different things to different things, and it doesn't have to confine to a schema, but it's always a good idea to have some set of rules around your schema. So the first thing you need to do is to install Mongoose and Bluebird. Bluebird is a promise library and Mongoose is used to create the schema. And make sure that you are installing 4.10.8. So just run this line and it's going to install Mongoose and Bluebird. And then we can actually start with creating in our app.js utilizing the mongoose schema so let's go over here uh let's paste in this mongoose bluebird now my database name is new db so i'm going to just change that to new db all right and um, now we can actually go ahead and start with our schema so let me go ahead and paste this and we can actually go and create a new file I'm going to create a different schema, so I'm going to call it a user.js. Not going to create a recipe schema. So this one we can actually use for our reference. All right. So the first thing you need to do is you need to do uh, load up mongoose because you will be using that to create your schema. And now comes the schema part. So this is where you're going to define that what your schema looks like, what the structure looks like. All right, so here we go. So what does a user schema looks like? Well, user can have a name, so first name, and the type will be string. Is it required? Is the first name required? Yeah, sure, it is required. Is it unique? No, it's not unique, so we don't want that. Username is, the first name is not unique. I mean, the people can have different, same uh, first name. You can have John and the other person can have John also. So it's definitely not unique. Next thing is last name. So type string, pretty much the same thing, required true. Um, the other thing we can have is addresses. Why is address, addresses, is it supposed to be a type string? No, the address, one person can have multiple addresses. So we'll put that as an array of addresses. And the addresses will have uh, different properties. So we can have street, which is type string, and it is required true. We can have a city type string required true. And that will be pretty much it. So we can remove all of this now. The final thing we need to do is we need to expose this schema uh, to the rest of the application. All right. So let's go ahead and create our user object. User equals to mongoose.model. And the model that we are creating, which it will be referred to as, it will be the user, and it is going to use user schema. But this, all of this code and all of the user schema and object and everything is inside user.js file. We still need to export it so that outside world can actually use it. So exports equals to user. All right, now let's remove that. Um, all right, so let's go back to our app.js and start using it. So let's go and jump into over here and simply start using our user. So let's go over here. Instead of the recipe, we have user. Instead of this, we have user. And user doesn't take the name, although user does take first name. So let's just call it uh, John and 
last name, which is Do. All right. All right. So if we run this, let's go ahead and console log user, save it. And if we are over here, you're going to see that it is saying that what are you talking about? I don't know anything about user. What is this user class? User is not defined. So we still have to require and we still have to import our user. So user equals to require oops, user. Save it, run it again, and this time you'll see that the user is actually populated and it gives us gives us the John Doe address and everything. All right. So this is how you will set up your model and your schemas for your MongoDB application using Mongoose.